Let's take a look at an operating cash flow example. So remember, operating cash flow equals net income plus depreciation. So we're going to look at an example. We'll find depreciation because we need that to get net income. We'll get net income. We'll add the two together. And boom, we've got operating cash flow. So we want to know what the operating cash flow is each year. Seven-year project. So that's going to be year 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. What's going on? Going to purchase equipment today for 110,000. Revenues each year of 400. Annual revenues of 400. Annual cost of 250. Tax rate of 40. And first, we'll look at the case where we've got straight line depreciation. Equipment is depreciated to 17,000 over a six-year useful life. So let's take a look at this one first. And so the table's got a lot going on, but basically, we got to find depreciation. And depreciation, if you remember, is equal to the amount that you bought the equipment for, which is 110, minus the amount that it's depreciated to, which is 17. So we got 110,000 minus 17,000. That's the total, which is 93,000. And we're going to spread that out evenly over six years. And each year, depreciation is going to be 15,500 each year for six years. So in year one, two, three, four, five, and six, it's a seven-year project. Not a problem. That just means depreciation in year seven would be zero. If it was a five-year project, then we would have depreciation of 15,500 over the first five years, and there would be some essentially unused depreciation, uh, which get incorporated uh, later when the equipment was sold. So we've got our depreciation. We want to find out net income, which is earnings before interest minus taxes. Taxes is 40% of EBIT. EBIT is sales minus cost minus depreciation. Nothing's going on in year zero. Years one through six are the same. Sales of 400,000, cost of 250, and depreciation of 15,500. So taxable income, EBIT, in each of those years is 134,500. Multiply that by 0.4, which is the tax rate, and you c compute that taxes are 53,800. Subtract to get net income of 80,700 in each of the first six years. Now remember, the reason net income is what it is is because we subtracted out depreciation, but we didn't actually have a cash flow of 15500 so we add it back in, and we can see that the operating cash flow in years 1 through 6 is 96200 How about year 7? You've got 400 minus 250 minus 0, taxable income of 150, 40% of that is 60, so you have a net income of 90. There's no depreciation. So operating cash flow is 90. And what's interesting is it shows you that if you look just at net income, year 7 is the best. It's got the highest net income. But we're more sophisticated than that. We recognize that cash flow is what's important. And if we looked at the operating cash flow, year 7 is actually the worst. And the reason net income is lower in the first six years is because we have this depreciation that we take. But that doesn't involve actually any cash. All it does is help save us on taxes. You can see there's $6,200 less in taxes per year, and that is why we have $6,200 higher in cash flow in those years. So example, example number two is uh, we use makers, three-year schedule, which means we're going to have depreciation over four years, and we have our rates in year one, year two, Year 3 and year 4, those rates are 33.33%, 44.44%, 14.82%, 7 7.41%. And first thing, let's figure out depreciation. And all we do is multiply the appropriate weights by 110. So 0.3333 times 110,000 is 36,663. Year 2, that's when we get our biggest depreciation. 44.44%, so it's 48,884. Year 3 and year 2. And notice for years 5, 6, and 7, even though the project's going on because it's a 7-year project, there's no depreciation. So sales minus costs minus depreciation, 400 minus 250 minus 36,663 gives us 113,337. Multiply it by 0.4. 
and you get taxes of 45,335, net income of 68,002, add back in depreciation, 104,665. And you do that for all seven years. Notice years five, six, and seven are the same. You get 400 minus 250, so taxable income of 150, minus zero, so taxable income of 150, 60 in taxes, 90 in net income, and since there's no depreciation, 90 in operating cash flow as well. And again, here a pattern is crystal clear that if we simply look at net income, then we would say, hey, look at year two. Year two is awful. It's the lowest. However, we're more sophisticated than that. We say, hey, no, you got to look at cash flow, and the operating cash flow in year two is actually the highest. And again, net income is so low because we get to take a big depreciation expense, but that lowers taxable income, which lowers taxes, so we don't have to pay as much to the government. We get to keep more in our own pockets, and that's why we have this discrepancy. And again, the years with the highest net income are years five, six, and seven. They're also the years with the lowest operating cash flow.